In the first episode of our documentary, we focused on the early years of Celestron Telescopes and its founder, Tom Johnson, a representative of the generation of dreamers that helped shape the stellar rise of the United States as a technological superpower it is now. Flash forward 50 years, and we find our nation at the start of a new millennium facing yet another urgent crisis. Our uh, nation is suffering in its ability to compete globally because we are not training the number of scientists and engineers and technically inclined people that we need in order to be competitive on a, a global scale. I visited a major military base in Arizona only a few weeks ago where a commander told us there of 200 positions, 200 well-paying positions that they are unable to fill, and went on to say that in his judgment, the number one national security uh, issue confronting the United States at the present time is our failure to train an adequate number of scientists, engineers, to maintain our nation in the position we have been accustomed to occupying. Recognizing the dire need to inspire the next generation of dreamers, the current administration announced its focus on science education using a backdrop that is very familiar to every amateur astronomer, a first ever White House star party. The event was held on October 8, 2009 on the White House lawn. It brought President Obama together with 150 middle school students, some of whom have already made notable astronomical discoveries at their young age. My name is Anthony Cook. I'm the Astronomical Observer here at Griffith Observatory. We have lots of children who visit here. Uh, every morning during the school year, we have about 600 people who come here and all in the fifth grade. This has been going on since the observatory first opened in 1935. We know it has a great deal of influence. Uh, many people who are involved in engineering, optics, telescope design, got their interest in looking here. Even people who built some of the orbiting moon probes got their interest by looking at models and photographs that were displayed here and went on to you know, actually orbit things around the moon later. Realizing the need to groom a new generation of talented engineers to preserve the spirit of innovation this company was founded on in 1960, Celestron II had focused a significant amount of resources on reaching out to schools and universities with the simple goal of exposing kids to the awesome hobby of astronomy. I'm uh, Perry Hacking. I'm at uh, El Camino College at where I teach uh, astronomy and physics. I've taught here since 1990. This restaurant's had an enormous impact on El Camino College and the hobby of astronomy. They've supported our program tremendously. We have a lot of small telescopes as well as the observatory are all Celestron telescopes. It would be difficult for me to estimate how many people, different people, have looked through that 16-inch Celestron up there. It may be one of the most popular telescopes on the planet when you count all the open houses that we have every semester. And we live in a fairly urban area, so we get a lot of people, plus all of the students that um, use it as well. You know, a lot of students have gotten into amateur astronomy because of the courses they, that we teach here at El Camino College. And of course, the equipment we use is from Celestron. The El Camino College, a close neighbor of Celestron, is located some five miles from their Torrance factory. Over the last 50 years, Celestron has forged a very strong relationship with this premier educational institution. El Camino College became an engine that produced many talented Celestron employees. Among them was Rick Hedrick whose inspirational story got started at El Camino and ultimately led him to become one of the owners of Celestron. It's actually astronomy is one of the things that brought me back to school. I had left high school, went to El Camino College, kind of flaked around, I played tennis, I you know, did, did work some jobs, and, but I wasn't really serious about school and I had no direction. And then I ended up quitting school for a while and playing in a rock band, so of all things. And uh, I remember 
one of my day jobs, worked for a mapping company. And I would have to go to City Hall all the time and the LA County Assessor's Office and I'd drive there. And I remember one time hearing Carl Sagan on the radio. And I'm listening to, to, the, to the radio show and, and I'm going, oh, Carl Sagan, he's full of it. That's not the way the universe is. But, you know, and I was sitting there, I was parked, I had arrived at the County Assessor's Office and I was listening to Carl Sagan and I ate my lunch in the car listening to him and criticizing what he was saying about the Big Bang or something, I forget what it was. And I just remember thinking to myself, you know, realizing the passion that he was pulling out of me, that that subject was, and that who the heck's gonna listen to me unless I go back to school and get educated in, in astronomy and physics. So it was that day that I decided to go back to school. Going back to El Camino was one of the best decisions of Rick's professional career. Fully committed to his personal quest for enlightenment, Rick was thrust into the environment of fellow knowledge seekers, where he thrived, embracing the education he was receiving and leaving a permanent mark on the El Camino College itself. The telescope making class started in 1992, and it was started by students, actually. Uh, two students in particular, Rick Hendrick and Elizabeth Mignon. They both came to me and they told me they wanted to learn how to make a telescope. I told them, uh, they were crazy and to go away, and, and they wouldn't go away. They kept coming back, so I kept giving them things to do, such as uh, go uh, read a telescope-making book about the process and then tell me what they learned, and they did. They kept coming back with the same question, will you teach a telescope-making class? So the final hurdle was to get them to find 10 other crazy people to uh, do this with, and uh, they went and found 10 people that signed up and uh, we had telescope making that first semester and I got hooked on it. Very enjoyable process and heck of a lot of fun. So I ended up making bigger and bigger telescopes and the class has been a success ever since. So almost 20 years of telescope making. After El Camino, Rick went on to study physics at UCLA. After graduating the university, Rick's passion for astronomy brought him to Celestron, where his ambition eventually put him at the helm of the company. The very company whose telescopes gave Rick that first glimpse of the stars on the observing deck at El Camino. And it was, you know, it was a wonderful dream come true. Walking around Celestron, walking through the big factory and just saying, God, I'm the owner of this company. El Camino College is just one of numerous schools, universities, and community centers supported by Celestron. The company recognizes that it has a responsibility to help educate the next generation of innovators and is committed to bringing the fun that is astronomy to children of all ages. And one of the ways that we do this is by donating product to different organization and astronomy groups. The Toberman House is a great example. You know, for a lot of these kids, this is the first time that they're looking through a telescope, so we're really excited to be a part of that.